Joining us on the show today, I said earlier, is a very special guest. The Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Kadiri Amzat, is joining us. He will be speaking on the Governor Babajide Sonwo lose re-election bid, why Lagosians should vote for him, and what they've done with the current mandates over the past four years. You can join the conversation by calling us on 81 270 or you could tweet to us at TVC Connect, hashtag your view on TVC. So my first question is the question that is very obvious. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me, Thank let's you. welcome you on a calm note, but yes. a lot of Nigerians and a lot of your um, people that you've come to serve, they, we are apprehensive, we are worried, we have been suffering, people queuing up to try and get cash, like the money you deposited in the bank and you have no access to it. So my first question to you is, what is your view on this Naira change, cash limits, and this culture change the CBN is forcing on us at this point in time? Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Well, I've listened to various shows, including yours, where people have said it's a good policy. But so let's look at the facts around the world. The percentage of currency in circulation compared to total money around the world in Japan is 20%. In the US is 12%. In the UK is about 6%. Go and look at it. In Nigeria is 5%. So to say that we have too much money in circulation is ridiculous. Wow. Mm. Because the total money, mm. meaning your bank account, your current account, your whatever, your mm. domiciliary, money, mm. total money in Nigeria is about 51 trillion. Okay. What we have outside is 3.35 trillion, according to CBN. So if you look at that, that's about 5%. So we don't have a problem so with we, you know, So when you print currency, mm. the essence is not to put it in a vault. Mm. The yeah. essence is for people to spend to it, it mm -hmm. to grow the economy. So mm. it, it, it's, it's truly amazing <laughs> that we are... I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just confused. And because this explains why it's counterproductive. Why? It's, because, I mean, you know, we don't have it. It's not that to, to say that we have too much money in circulation compared to total money just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And the statistics is out there for all of us to see. We can Google it. In Japan, it's 20% all over the world. And these are societies which are actually cashless. Yes. Mm -hmm. So remember now, in Jigawa State, according to MBS, only 18% of women bank accounts in Jigawa State. So what happens to those 81%? You have disempowered Nigeria. You've had this, you know, so those 81% in Jigawa State, across the country, they told us that between the ages of 18 and 45, mm. only 41.8% have bank accounts. So obviously. So what happens to the rest? Mm. So it's okay to say cashless, fine. But <laughs> go to Oshodi and see the amount of money that the people circulates. transact in a day. People have done master's research on it. It's about 140 million. And that's about four or five years ago. So if you shut that down, we are, we are creating chaos. You're going to kill the economy. economy. Yes. You're going to that's kill what, the economy. Well, you know, I'm hearing you say this, and I'm wondering, because CBN says they sat down with stakeholders before mm. they did this. Who are the stakeholders? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't, don't call us, and we are Nigerians. No, so you see, the challenge is this. You know, and I was talking to some MDs of banks who said, oh, this is a good policy when you look at it though the implementation is wrong. But the reality is this. I lived in the United States for 14 years. Aunties, you have house girls. Can you afford house girls in the US? No. Mm -hmm. no. So when you go to K2 market, that man pulling that truck to help you, do you have that in the UK? No. Mm -hmm. no. So why, why do you want to live your life and monetary policy based on something that's totally different from yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so and I tell you this. Different. I tell you this. A director in the Ministry of Works Funded his education years back in that case to pulling cards. Mm. Mm. So people have done good things with their life in that system. So why are we killing it's something bad, that, that is not there? We are looking it. for stuff. Exactly. So the Minister for Finance had said that you know, she wasn't carried along on mm. this. You know, in fact, when the swap, yeah. uh, Naira swap was announced, the new Naira notes yeah, was yeah. announced, and she came out publicly within a few days. I was wondering if they did not carry her along, no mm -hmm. who would yeah. they carry her along? So now that some governors have gotten the took taking the bull by the horn and gone to court to get you know an injunction to stop this, do you see a possibility in the re a review of this? Well, difficult to say. I, I really can't say. I mean, I really can't say. I'm just hopeful that 
everybody will listen to Supreme Court. They said on the 15th there will be hearing. So let's see how it goes. And uh, so as of now, we can exchange old Naira till 15th. Because the reality is, people still told me this morning they can't even transfer. Oh, yeah. so because we don't want to go there. Exactly. We do not <laughs> stress it our technological yeah. readiness. Do it, yeah. We do not really stress it. <laughs> now that you are pushing it, it's breaking down. So Bro we need to. It's broken down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we need to look at it. Yes, sir. Let's come to Lagos State. <laughs> <laughs> we have done a bit of Nigeria right now. Uh, we know that um, Governor Sonwolu has um, given an instruction for palliatives to be shared across uh, citizens or residents of Lagos State. Uh, why do you think he's doing this at this time? Uh, let's, not, let's not rob the goodness we see with elections, but let, some people are also asking, are you sure it's not because of the elections, because mm. he wants to be re-elected that he's giving this at this time? The well, if, so we've all started by saying there is a crisis. Yeah. So, and I was watching a television program this morning when a senior advocate, Robert Clark, said that yesterday, in order to get 100,000, he has to pay 125,000 now. He said it on national television. Mm. So if somebody of that status cannot get currency, it means the average people also cannot get currency. Even if you have the money, you work hard all your lives, you have money, but you can't access it. So the question is, what can we do? That's exactly what we did during COVID, to say, OK, let's go to the less vulnerable. Let's give them some palliatives, some food items, and so on, so that to relieve people. Fortunately for us, we are now producing rice. So we have bags of rice, like. I think 40,000 bags of rice that we will distribute yeah. to people across various segments. And then we said, OK, everybody that takes our BRT buses or our lag ferry, the lag ride, the last stop, and, you know, so first mile and last stop buses, those small, small buses, we give them 50% discounts as long as you have your carry cards. Mm -hmm. So as of this morning, mm -hmm. it has started. Somebody sent me a tweet to say, oh, should it, you're not probably 225 Naira. It used to oh. be about 450. Mm -hmm. so, it's half 50%. Well it has started. So yesterday, we allowed them to reconfigure their machines. Mm -hmm. But this morning, it has started and negotiations will be paying half price. Mm -hmm. The essence for us is a lot of money for us, but the essence is let's find a way to relieve things for negotiations. Yeah, you, just, you just answered the that. question on yeah. implementation. Yeah, no, yes, that's for the transportation. But for the food, who is eligible and how can they get to that? And so, you know, we've done, like I said, we've done it during COVID. So usually we have the NGOs, mm -hmm. we have churches, we have mosques, and we have uh, religious leaders and so on and so forth. So they have channels by which they know people who are vulnerable. Okay. So it's the same channels so that, that we we'll use again. Mm -hmm. okay. We just send it through those churches, those mosques, and then they distribute to the people that are less vulnerable. See, this is very commendable, really, because for me, I know that when food is not your problem, you don't have a problem. Well, uh, but what, what are there other measures aside food and transportation, you know, that you have done to also ease people's lives at this time? Well, I mean, it, it's... So remember that uh, government is also, uh, you know, going through some issues also. So for example, I mean, if we are paying some of our vendors, we might have challenges now. Mm. You understand? So we might have challenges. So uh, we're looking at all spheres. What do we do again? What do we do when people go to the hospital and so on and so forth? But again, we quantify this thing. So it's not, so people have said that, why don't you do it across all transportation, even the ones that, the challenge is, how do we quantify it? Mm. How? So that we don't also now run into trouble. But with Karika, when you tap in at the back end, nobody can tell us that, oh, I'm doing four runs before. I'm not doing seven mm. because of 50%. Automated exactly. But, but because we have the technology, we can know, okay, you did four runs. These are the number of people that enter your buses. We can then pay mm -hmm. so that there will be, no, be no confusion. Mm -hmm. So right. we don't want to create any crisis at the same time. We still have with us the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, and we've discussed extensively about the... Naira, change in Naira as well as the palliative that Lagos State has instituted. If you have enjoyed the discount by using Cowrie Card, please call and tweet so that other people will know that it actually works. It's working, yeah. 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 So let me take you to another question concerning transportation. When the president came to launch the Blue Rail Line, Thank you, we did not hear what everywhere was blue rail, blue rail, blue rail, blue rail. Blue rail. <laughs> we had the when the governor came on the show, he mentioned it. When the commissioner came on the show, as in like it was this. Blue, when are we going to start using the blue, blue rail? rail? So if you notice that.
by standard, all over the world, you must test it. Mm. So Dubai tested for six months without passengers. Mm -hmm. But what happens is you bring in stakeholders. So for example, school children, how do you use your carry cards? How do you actually enter a train? So you know, they will say, mind the gaps mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. So people need to know all this before you actually start. In. So what we are doing now is we are taking stakeholders, okay. school children, mm -hmm. market women. So you can't carry this, you can carry this. Okay. So that's what will happen for probably the next two, three months. Okay. So that we test all the, everything, make sure everything runs well. That's when you, you do all the cracks and then you are able to start the process. So, so by stakeholders, you mean, I love the example of um, schools, children. Are you going to be writing to schools, organizing kids to just to sensitize them on how to use Absolutely. the facility? Absolutely. Or exactly is going Absolutely. So basically, you know, you, you write to schools. We can't take all the students. Exactly. Uh -huh. So you take university students, you take secondary school students, primary school students with their teachers because basically you have a number that you need to take. So if you go on one, two rounds and then they come back again, another set and so on. Mm -hmm. So all stakeholders, market women, artisans and you know, small, small numbers. So they have to send representatives so that and then they, hopefully they can spread the message out. Oh, I entered, oh, you must do this, you must do that. Because for example, if you rush the turnstile, you might have issues. It might not open. So basically, how do you use your, your carry cards? Mm -hmm. And you must have carry cards. So people cannot even come there if they don't have carry cards. Oh. And so on and so forth. So everybody needs to know that before the operation actually starts. Okay. So um, I think we'll, we'll move on to the next um, conversation, which is elections. <laughs> elections. Yeah. Okay. And um, there's been mixed reactions concerning the decision of INEC to partner with um, the Lagos State Parks Management Committee for yeah. distribution of um, electoral material and also personnel. And most of the conversation is around um, their credibility, some political leanings. What, um, what do you have to say about that? Well, I think INEC has to make a decision as to who they use. Um, what they do is to carry materials from A to B. You know, it's a, it's a problem that we sort of atomize everything in our country. Coca-Cola distributes Coca-Cola every day to nooks and corners of this country. It shouldn't be a big deal. Well, sir, this is elections. It's, well, yeah. yes. And it's a very so, sensitive time. If I agree. I agree. But the reality is that we will not use Ghanaians. Yeah. We will not use Togolese. We must use Nigerians. And remember, this is not the first time. We've done elections since 99. That's it is these same people that they use. Oh. Maybe then the they're under people. NURTW. So, yes. Yes. And, so and now, now they're they are under... under um, Lagos, Lagos State, State Parks yeah. Management also, and under the leadership of MC. So the conversation is MC has his leaning and the field it might be. Yeah. Yes. Well, what I mean, and so the, like I said, I mean, those are decisions that INEC has to make. Okay. As to, but the reality is that they are organized more than people think. And I'm not here to defend MC or anybody. Mm. I don't know their operations like that. But the reality is that it is easier to deal with an organized sector. But in Lagos, we are lucky. Those people that do BRT, we have private sector people that do BRT, but they are bigger bosses. Mm. They are bigger bosses. So if INEC wants to use them, they are private companies. They can oh, use them. Okay. So we can dictate for INEC what they do, but they must be. But for me, like I said, um, we, we, it, it, that's exactly why some people say, oh, because of election, we, are, we want to change now. You know, why do we atomize everything? It's, it's also around important election? that you establish the trajectory before. So INEC have always worked with the NURT every elections across states. But what happened mm. that you know made Lagos State formed the Lagos Parks and Gardens Committee as as NURT? Was there a clash? Was there the, the group of uh, pulling out? What exactly happened that you made it you know what it is now and why Yes, I mean we so basically, you know, we fundamentally we've spoken to them and said, listen. You want to collect your deals. It's okay. If you are a member of, I'm a member of Nigerian Society of Engineers. I pay my deals. Nobody comes to my house to harass me. Mm. Find a way within your, so, so that you don't cause chaos on the road. Sure. And therefore, there are also different groups fighting. You remember in Lagos Island what happened. And that's why we said enough is enough. Mm. You cannot be creating chaos. And that's why we, we said enough is enough. Let's stop this nonsense. So it's to protect the citizens. That's why we did what we did. Now, like I said, INEC will make a decision what they want to do. 
But remember, if NRT at the time we actually uh, MC was the head of NRC, then you had CW in Lagos anyway mm -hmm. at that time. So I'm not so sure uh, exactly. So really, yet, uh, I don't think it, it matters. You know, for me, I don't However, think it matters. Okay. So apart from INEC preparation for the elections, how ready is Lagos State for the coming elections? Oh well, I mean, it's uh, it's the citizens. I mean, I know. I'm sure you know that. Uh, Lagos State registered 7 million and 16,000 people, the highest in the country. As of the last count, I think about 6.7 million people have registered, have collected their PVC. I thought that's over 7 million. So what we are pushing out is for people to go out and vote. We are convinced that uh, we've done enough, we've fulfilled our promises, and that Lagosians are very sophisticated, they are intelligent, they will make the right decisions. And that right decision is that they will vote for our party. Is there a guarantee for security? Because oh, some, yeah, yeah, someone yeah. like me now, yeah. I'm asking myself, do you want to go out on No, you day? have to vote. Don't even say <laughs> that. If I hear, pa, 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 <laughs> then I sit <laughs> on my head and I'm home. So it's a question a lot of people are asking. How, now, how do we ensure that yes, dogs don't take over? Take over no. the well, I mean, so the, the, the reality is that luckily Lagos has been shown to know peace for the past. And that's why the governor refused to go to last debate. But for the first time in our campaign, we've been going campaign, we, we dance, we sing. It was when the PDP candidate, Jando, went to Suruleri, and we saw it on video. So that's why we said, ah, we, in, not, not, this nonsense has to stop. You cannot bring violence to our election. So we've been going down. We've gone to almost all parts of the state. There has been no single violence. Why are we going to, why, why the violence? People are there to receive us. So violence, and the commission, the, the commissioner of police has assured us there will be massive security apparatus across the state. If you actually want to impose violence, you'll be sorry you'll be for collect. yourself. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm, I'm seriously <laughs> hoping that cuts across seriously. all areas. And, um, of the states are being, not just yes, the developed... Yes. Uh, no, no, of the state, of the state. Each polling booth with uh, uh, civil defense, the soldiers and them, each polling booth will be my, That's what the security apparatus are telling us. They are taking it very... And if anybody thinks... He wants to do something strange, they'll be accountable for their actions. <laughs> we still have with us the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, and now we want to go into what have you done. So, we've had the pleasure on this show to talk to the Labour Party governor, um, gov governorship candidate. We've spoken to the PDP governorship candidate, and everybody. Um, we've spoken to the APC. We've also spoken to the APC governor, the current governor here. And the governorship you know, candidate. And <laughs> we, we've heard. All sides. Both sides, you know, we've heard, no, they did not do anything. They are, it's, the number is not the right thing. They are saying this, they are saying that. But let's start with where we have been, which is transportation and um, road infrastructure. It is a major concern for Lagosians. Every time construction is going on, our lives literally pause. pause because it's a lot of traffic on the roads. And there are some places where there's still no major improvement, even despite the fact that a lot of work has been done. So what would you say, what would you highlight as your major infrastructural achievement in terms of roads? And which area would you acknowledge you haven't done enough and you're looking forward to face those areas and if you get re-elected? So the way to look at it, I'm a data person. People say, oh, you've not done anything and so on. In 19, Lagos has, as of 1999, Lagos has about 9,219 roads. Only 7% were attacked in 1999. Today, it's 58%. So we've been making gradual process. Now, the number will keep increasing because societies are developing faster than government. So to say that, we've, that that's, that's wrong. If you say the facts mm. and say that, oh, this has not been done. So in terms of transport, part of the problem we found out is it's not just even good roads is how we use the roads. Yeah. And that's why we realized that Lagos, for example, roundabouts don't work for us. It was something we took from the colonial time, and then we just think it's working. It doesn't work for us because of our density. So Lagos has a density of 211 cars per square kilometers. Now, Anambra has 11. So you cannot then use the same model that works in Anambra in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So roundabout, so that's why you see Lekki 1, 
the Gondo and the rest that were taken away the roundabouts and using signalization. So it's to say that we are a state that is, in terms of size, we are very small, 0.4% mm. of the land mass of Nigeria, but we are, we are hosting 11% of the population. I like the so, fact that you've, you've spewed data, so... Yeah, so helps. because it's important for us to understand that. Mm. So to say that, ah, there will be traffic, there will be traffic in Lagos. There will be traffic because the number of cars that we have is more than, is 10, 15 times more than any other state in Nigeria. Hmm. And then we have a smaller land. Yeah. So it's not like Niger State that is 8% of the land mass of Nigeria mm. and has about 10% of our cars. So scientifically, we see that we have. So the challenge for us is how do we utilize our roads? And it's part of the problems that I mentioned before. That's part of the reason why we created the park. We wanted to have control because part of our challenges is that people park in our, in our property, especially our downfall drivers. Mm. Ah. So how do we make them responsible? How do we make sure we can track it? Those are the issues for us. So we have a command center where we can see where the traffics are. So the moment there is a gridlock in six areas in Lagos, there will be traffic. And we know those areas. And so the, the challenge for us is how do we build our roads better? So we pick roads based on traffic usage. Mm. So it's not because I like you or I don't like you. No, 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 no. So what is the traffic bearing capacity of that road? How do we discharge traffic? And that, that's what makes decisions for us. So we are sorry that sometimes you have to inconvenience, but we have to build the roads in order to make life easier for our people. Also, some roads have been seen to, if they had been done, to would really relieve the stress on our major roads. And I told, uh, talked about the Tedimo Road with the governor. If at the time when the Badagri Express Road to um, it was um, Okoko was being constructed and outward, there was that option. the Tedimo Road option was working, not just the bridge end of it, nobody would be shouting. Because if, even though it wasn't done, it was the alternative that the commercial buses started using. So we just saw them, everybody destroying the road and worsening the living conditions of people on that side. So it's important that that road is done. I'm hoping that, you know, as the governor had said, <laughs> This year. Because that's that your area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that but remember that Tedimo that. was awarded when I was I commissioner for works. Mm. It was awarded, it was started. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it wasn't completed. Mm. But that, that's not the story. The story is this. You must also look at what is happening. So, for example, we are doing Bubamarua along down your axis yes. with some people called Badmos Road, right? Mm. So, Bubamarua Bubama now Road. is concrete because we know that where you have all those tank farms. farms. NMPC have told us about 40% of the total PMS usage in Nigeria yes. comes from that place. Yes. But in our meetings with NMPC recently, they've begged us to stop construction of that road. Mm -hmm. And we've stopped. It's about 55% completed. Like we said, it's concrete, so it must cure for 11 days, whatever, before you can do everything. But we've stopped it because they said that it's hindering supply. Low. So we will stop the road temporarily to make sure at least let's see how this so, so you must also look at the situation the other things happening and uh, of course so, and remember uh, transportation and traffic management is just a component you must also think about health yes. you must also think about there. education and mm -hmm. so on and so forth so that's why it's difficult for us to apart from the technicalities so because in Lagos when you move traffic you also move water because I've listened to a candidate of a party that comes out and says, oh, they don't do any drainage. Oh, my goodness. What are you talking about? So the gentleman doesn't understand Lagos. He said we have six canals. That's, that's nonsense. That's not true. What we have are six systems. Mm. So we regard a system as connection of canals. So, for example, from Agege, Agege all the way, Shoguro, and then all the way to Odoyalaro. Mm. That's about... 18, 19, 20 kilometers. Wow. So there are about 17 canals that link it up and discharge to that place. Wow. Because along that axis, you don't have body, bodies of water. Mm -hmm. So th we have six systems like that. That's the, so when he says we have only six canals in Lagos, I laugh. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, in terms of the environment, it's not a question of even the canals. So today, in today's world, is mitigation and remediation. So we must what find it. So basically, you must change our we must change our lifestyles. Mm. 
Okay. Think about it. California had flood. 16 people died. They never had flood before. 16 people died in the state of California. That's one of the most advanced countries in the world. Mm -hmm. In Germany, they had flood that killed 180 people, the size of Belgium. So we must look around us. So when the Atlantic Ocean, when there is a problem in UK is melting, it's coming here. Yeah. We are part of it. Mm -hmm. So we must say, how do we change our lifestyles? And those are, so a legal state has a, a department that is called resilience department. If there is a major shock around the world, how do we survive? Mm -hmm. What do we do? So buying fire trucks, buying all these things, is not accidental. Okay. We are preparing that in case there is a problem. These are the things we need, and we prepare, we're preparing it. So when people talk that, not, they don't understand governance. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. And you, 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 look, if you want the MD of a bank, or you have a real estate company, and you have a real estate company, yes. the person managing them will understand real estate. It, yeah. If not, it will fail. Yeah. Mm. Because they are, so that's the bottom line. The challenge, the tragedy in our country is that we give our society to people who have no understanding. Mm. Mm. That is the tragedy. Meanwhile, you want to, so the MD of a bank in Nigeria mm. is a banker. Yeah. Economist, accountant, and the rest. They have the requisite knowledge. When the CBA is not the same. I said it. I wanted to, you know, say, you know, you don't need, you don't yes. need <laughs> engineering knowledge for certain things. For instance, absolutely. In words, Eric Moore, as you're climbing the Igomo Bridge, you see the bars are already exposed. Yes. You know, the tar has left it not as protective, uh, protected as it was by. Whatever they use, the, the concrete, um, the bitumen mm. that they use to cover that area, mm. the bars are already extending out. And you know, you'll be expecting that government will pass this road too. They will see it. Mm. They will see it. You don't need any knowledge. So when somebody comes out tomorrow and says that that place wasn't well done, mm. you know, it, it's public knowledge. Uh, well, so you, you are talking about management. So the, the, what we have, let me explain to you, what we have in Lagos is we have a team that their job is if a, 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 a pole, is down, they should go and fix it. So that's why we tell even everybody in the executive council, when you are going home and you see something, you must send a, a picture to your colleague. They must know. Mm. There has to be a way for us to know that, oh, this is a challenge, this is a problem. This particular one has been forever. So, the, 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 no, so but you see, the problem is that it's a, it's where you are talking about, so let me tell you the geography of that place. When we were expanding Lagos Badagri, the Mazamaza Maza Bridge, the Mazamaza Maza Bridge, the Mazamaza Maza Bridge is not just an ordinary bridge. Mm -hmm. That's why it was only a particular company, I don't need to mention, that, that was able to do it mm -hmm. because of the water flow. I didn't even know it, but they were able to show us. And so part of the problem that you're talking about is because we build that bridge, mm -hmm. you can't expand it. Well, this is mm -hmm. the dry bridge I'm talking about, the Igomo one. Oh. In words, but the bars are now exposed. The Mazamaza Maza Bridge is working fine. I use that. Because I know we fixed that. Uh, so we no, the, even yeah. the concrete, the grounds and everything. Okay, we'll I'm go and look at it. Eric Moore. In words, in words, in words, yeah. so that's another data. major issue that I, I feel mm -hmm. we should address. Because while there are the, the, the role of the citizenry in collating data yes. for the... for Because we don't expect you or the governor to be everywhere. But we expect there should be a channel where if we see something wrong, we can send that message and somebody can work on it, or at least somebody would respond. Yeah. Sometimes it is like, make me feel like you heard me, yes. that Nigerians Absolutely. want. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Uh, we, we, we saw that message. We saw that the Eric Moore Bridge is open. Don't worry. We would, we'll, we'll in there. a few weeks, we would get to it, and it helps. BC has a question. Yes, sir. So I know that you are bidding for re-election. <laughs> <laughs> and the governor, Governor Babajide Sawolu. So tell us why you think Niger uh, Nigerians and Lagosians should give you another opportunity. What is that thing that you are going to be doing when you come back that you haven't done this time? Well, I uh, thank you very much for that question. So, as you know, the needs of people will always be there. So, no government will be able to realistically finish. If not, there, is no, there will be no need for government <laughs> in the U.S. or so on. So, because our needs are always dynamic and they are that such. So, for example, let's look at each sector. So, for example, in health, every bed that you provide in a maternal hospital, studies have shown that you save 10 lives. Every bed. Now, when I say bed, I don't just mean a bed, mm. meaning with the medical, whatever. That's what 
started the idea of MCC's maternal child center that we are building. We started during BRF, we've expanded it. So our study shows that we need 18 in our state. I'm sorry, 16 in our state. We built 12. We are going ahead with the next four. We must finish that. We are building the largest pediatric hospital. Everybody in Lagos know that hospital, Lagos Island. We've heard about it. That's where the majority of the people in, in that were born. Mm -hmm. We are now building a seven-story hospital because it's, it's crowded. The doctors are there and the rest, but it's crowded. People massive. are, so we are massive hospital. So we are expanding it. Now, that is in health. And across, if somebody came here and also said that, oh, he has traveled and there is no PAC in. Well, the truth is we have about 418 PACs in Lagos. However, only 67 are flagship. What does flagship mean? It means they open 24 seven. So for example, if you go to a Lhasa Maja, mm -hmm. it will open 24 seven. Open if you open, if you, so, there are, so our challenge is how do we make all of them open 24 seven? How? Now, it's a question of staff, is a question of equipment and the rest. The challenge also is that constitutionally, PAC is this is local government. But the reality is, <laughs> I don't think they, they have the resources. Wow. And it's so and we blame them. We blame them because, but think about it. The federal government has 54% of the resources, plus the uh, what they call the what is it, the, the environmental something, which are another two percent. Mm -hmm. That's 56%. State has 27. And local government, that's about 24. Now, when you share that 24% among 777, seven, seven, you, you can imagine. So in terms of quantum, they have. So we must also look at how we distribute our resources. Mm. If you say these are the Closer grassroots to the people. people. Exactly. So, you know, we, we, so, but the challenge is we take it up with them to say, oh, look, let's also come together and do it. Now, the, the, the reality is all those 57 that are, it wasn't 57 where we came into government, mm -hmm. but we've gotten into that. So, for example, at Ajiro Mifelodu, one just became a flagship because yes. we've built it up. We've, uh, mm -hmm. Now, the question is that in certain areas, like mm -hmm. VI, for example, like Ikoyi, for example, there are not many PACs there. Because, don't well, need, it seems the majority there, of the people there will not even use, yeah. majority, yeah. not everybody. So, it's not as active. And what we've done in Lagos is that if a doctor resigns or leaves, because I know we've said about it or whatever, Jackpa, the, they don't need approval of governor. It's already there. You must replace it. If a, a teacher retires or resigns for whatever reason, you must replace. So we have automatic replacement strategy for our doctors and for our teachers. So we are doing everything, but you must keep pushing because the reality is that we don't, if you go to Aurelia Gege General Hospital today, Lagos has 42 general hospitals. You realize that 40% of them are not from Lagos. So the mm. problem we have is we don't even know the number mm. yeah. that will come. So, um, they are not from Lagos, but you can't turn people back. Yeah. When we did hip replacement surgery in Lasut, we brought Lagosians from all over the world, whatever, about 40% came from Southeast. Are you going to turn them back? No. We can't. So, so we've, we've, we've this uh, beg, let's beg other states also <laughs> to improve to their own to reduce the stress of Lagos the Lagos state. state. We're still interviewing the deputy governor of Lagos State and Mariam, over to you. Yes, so I am curious about how or what the roles of a deputy governor is, and especially a deputy governor like you, you know, like you, you are very well versed in Lagos State business, just as well <laughs> as the governor and everyone that comes here, you know, from Lagos State. And I'm wondering, is there a clash of egos, or how do you work? Do you work well together, and how does that um, affect, you know, the policies that we eventually have here in Lagos State? Well, we are lucky in Lagos that we don't have any ego or clash. The the responsibility is so much that you just have to find ways to give different people different assignments. Um, so, and you know, a lot of people might not know, you know. When we were commissioners, the, clo the closest person to me was Governor Songolu. At that time, we never knew we'd be governor or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we've been very close for 15, 16 years. Uh. You know, of all the commissioners, then it was probably the only one that ever visited his house. Mm -hmm. We were close. The family knew each other. We, were, we just became friends. So maybe 
that made it easier. The relationship. I don't know. But our relationship is solid. We work together. We make, you know, every decision that is made, I'm aware of it. So we, we call ourselves at 1 a.m. Omobolowa. <laughs> and then we come, we start talk. This is my thinking. This what are you thinking, and so on and so. On. So we we have no issues. That's why we are able to work together. In um, I, I I really like that. I would like us to go back to um, achievements because really, at the end of the day, negotiations feel like there's something about this election. There's, this election is giving giving Nigerians options, mm. and even in Lagos State, there are options. And I would like you to once again address. We've spoken about health, we've spoken about infrastructure. I'd like you to talk about the achievements within the educational sector that you're very proud of. Well, basically, we're building standard schools, uh, meaning instead of the normal chalk, we're now using whiteboards. Ah. Uh, Fairplan School, for example, is an example. Uh, Elemora School is an example. We are building standardized schools across the state. We're renovating buildings, but that's not the most important. Building is, is good. But buildings don't teach. Mm. What teaches are teachers. Mm. And of course, the conduct of the students. So basically, counseling, counseling is back in our schools. Oh. So, so that, you know, we all, we've all been in primary schools. We do stupid things, right? So <laughs> when we are growing up, we think of it we do this. So counseling, guidance and counseling is back in our schools. And, you know, our teachers are extremely important mm. because you can... You furniture will break, mm. windows will break, you can't replace them. Our teachers, they stay, children stay in primary school, for example, for six years. Yeah. Our teachers will be there for 30 years, sure. 25 years. So if we don't take good care of them, mm. it, it's a problem. Mm. And that's why for our teachers, we've done massive trainings for our teachers. Because it's, you, it's okay for you to have the knowledge, but how do we impact it to a six-year-old six child? Mm. a seven-year-old child. So today, a lot of our public schools, a lot of our public schools are better than a lot of public, private schools mm -hmm. in Lagos today. Now, the first thing is this. Every teacher in our school is qualified. Sure. So what do I mean? He has certification. He has gone through educational training. So it's not that I have a BS in mathematics. It doesn't mean I can teach it. I might know it, but so there are skills to teach. Have you gotten that skills? Every teacher in public, primary, and secondary school that have that. Now, for our teachers also, we've given all of them the tablets. Oh, yeah. That's that allows... Let me pause you on that tablet note. Um, let's take a call from Yakubu. We've lost about two calls when I'm trying to oh. get your point. So, Yakubu has called in from the Okwemu. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. You're live. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, good morning to uh, Deputy Governor of Lagos State, the person of uh, Mr. Assad. Good morning, uh, sir. First and foremost, sir, uh, let me begin by thank you. Like, like Governor, like Deputy, we, we <laughs> have been lucky in this state. <laughs> Doing from uh, Ashwagbol and Mitsunubu to Fashola and uh, Ambody, and then now we have the best place that handle the Lagos State matter now. And then I would say that let me even thank you, sir, because there was a time you were with Mr. Yori in, uh, uh, this morning. Meanwhile, I complained that very particular day that was the road from St. Joseph down to number one, that the road was so bad. But as I'm talking to you now, the road has been fixed. I, 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 really, I really need to thank you for that. You, you did well because that day you promised that you are going to look into these events as they look through too. Having said that, the cowrie, you mentioned cowrie. The cowrie car that we are using, yes, it has been working. It has tested it. The the, the, the the percent has been reduced from the Osho the down to Yanokaja now is 225 now. Yes, that's been working. I can testify to that. Yeah, and the end, you have to do, sir. I can tell you for free. Because you made mention earlier that uh, you, you are sanitizing, you are sanitizing them in order for them not to cause uh, old job and all that. They are still collecting money on the road. Mm -hmm. If you can be able to look into that for us, I then we'll be happy. Then, I can also tell you that you make mention of the other party that come to your field because I was the other party last time. If you want to democracy a working system, sir, we do respect to the other party. I don't need to do, to to say something else today, but you need a thousand lives 
So the market is the working the system like Lagos. Like because Lagos is market. working, the citizens of Lagos they can testify to that. Even if anybody don't testify to it, here in Dokwemu, I can testify to that, that because when you want to demarcate a working system, you need a thousand miles. So if you can see, if they are able to say something on the on the studio, you see that they were they were bringing a, a maybe period to nineteen ninety nine picture. Show Labour State and look at the Labour State the way it is. But they forget to show the better part of Labour State. We know what we are doing, and then we have already have who we are, we are going to protect for. So that is that. So thank that you so much. Is good working going. Thank you. Is, uh, thank you yeah, so much. It's, it's, it's a happy <laughs> negotiation. <laughs> yes. Thank and you so much. So yes. well, well, you were explaining about the tablets. We've heard extensively about yes, how so, that. Yes. So every every teacher has a tablet. Mm. You know, when we were growing up, there is this lesson notes, notes. Mm. and it's a problem in the sense that my lesson notes will probably be different from yours even though the subject will be the same the topics will be the same but the way we customize it will be different so the challenge is it takes them time so now the lesson note has been developed it gets downloaded to the, to the tablets and then we can geolocate you as a teacher because part of the problem also is absenteeism mm. so we can geolocate that oh the moment you turn it on, we know, oh, okay, you are at this That's particular class. school, whatever. So it allows students to actually receive the same lesson from different teachers. And what it does for me, on my laptop, I have all the primary schools in Lagos. So I can check attendance. At any time. Attendance. I can check even the, the, the results. How is it that people in primary 2A are doing well in arithmetic and pupils in 2B are not. Mm. What is the problem? So at least it allows us to understand the challenges that we have and provide solutions to them to say, okay, maybe we need to change this, maybe we need to change that. So we just got in another caller. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Murray, and um, everybody there on the street. My name is uh, Peter Walaka. I'm calling you from uh, Nagodo Ketuati. Okay. I want to say hi to Dr. Amzad. Yeah. Good morning. Doctor, I, yeah, doctor, I want to just um, ask a question, you know. Number one is, um, I want to, I've, I've been, I was not been so happy, you know, see you and Governor so we'll do campaign because if we don't need campaign, I, I'm a middle man, see. I am from the ethnic state, it's a new state. What is happening in Lagos has never happened in another state. I've been encouraging other states to go from what's going on in Lagos. You don't need campaign. People have already won. I you don't need campaign, sir. Yeah. You know. And secondly, I want to ask uh, Dr. Amzat about Orisha. That the place they call Orisha community in Magoto, phase one. The road is bad. Children cannot go to school. Is there Orisha anything community. you can do? And make a promise to you on this live TV that you could look into Orisha it. Community. Ask the commissioner for what? To come to Orisha Magoto in the uh, United States. Come and see what's going on there. There's no road. There's no, no training system. And secondly, I want to say congratulations to Ashwa He is not the nearest next president of this country. I am an evil man. I get access to Ashwa Ji's house. He has known anybody. That man is a hero. I, won't, I don't want to say much, but God knows. I'm, say, I'm not saying this is anything, but I'm saying it out of my heart. And joy. Let Ashwa Ji take God to it for him. I'm an evil man and I'm supporting to the end. Thank you. So, Thank you. So the, the, the estate in Magodo, or Nisha? Ma, uh, Ishawu was. Ishawu. So, Ishawu, they vast about it to be. I'm hearing Orishe, I'm hearing Ishawu. Right. So, I'm sure that if maybe when, um, if you, in the studio, we probably don't hear well, but I'm yeah. sure the person okay. watching. I heard Orishe as well. Uh, right. In Magodo, right. phase one. Phase one, was okay. Specific. Okay.